Hello everybody, Tim here again. Uh, so what I'm showing you right now is the back of the RCA K6415B is the model. Uh, in fact, it even says so up here, RC415B. It says so right there, sorry, right there. Uh, and, and the thing that makes this a B apparently is this antenna over here, this black oval that says uh, magic loop antenna. Now that's not the actual antenna that fits this unit. That antenna is from I believe a 110K or a K110 like this is the K60. I think it's a newer antenna but I couldn't find one that would that belong to this. I only found one and it looked like there was parts missing so I extrapo extrapolated where this one would go in comparison if it was the right antenna uh, and I had to kind of make this part of the bracket down here at the very bottom if you look. That uh, originally the antenna was longer and that that piece of wood that runs long ways bolted right down here. So what I had to do is I had to raise it a little bit and I put that in there. <clears throat> but this antenna, the idea behind it is it sits in there and it can turn to give you better reception. And it has a, a primary and a secondary coil and that winding goes here and then there's the uh, the other coil windings go back here and you can't see it. Then there's actually an antenna that works in conjunction. Let me see. I, I don't think you saw where I was pointing. Yeah, here. So here's where one side of the wiring goes for the, for the primary and secondary and then the uh, the opposite, the primary. I don't remember which one's which. goes back in here and I know the same type of plug. You can't see it. And then up above everything in the top of the cabinet facing down and it would be here facing down, there's actually another antenna that works in unison with all this stuff. Why am I showing you this, you ask? Uh, I just kind of wanted to document what I had done to make it fit. And I'll show you how everything works and uh, we'll take a look at the, uh, the actual radio in use. But that was it. So if for some reason you have one of these and you can't find the original antenna, a newer antenna as long as it has a primary and secondary. I had to do a few little modifications and the alignment changed ever so slightly but basically it's work it till it sounds best uh, you know any modifications you have to make because there's a capacitor that was in this antenna that's really not in that antenna if you're using the right one it's in the radio so you have to kind of decide whether you even need it or not. Actually I started by removing the capacitor but I was able to tune it better by putting it back in, so I did stick it back in. So I'm going to pause it now and then we'll flip it around and you can actually hear all it sounds. It's about 7 o'clock at night here on the east coast of uh, the United States, so I don't know what kind of radio signals we'll get, but we'll give it a shot. Okay, so there it is standing in all its glory. I'll turn it on and then move in a little bit closer. I can't remember where the power button was. So I'm going to move in a little closer. And we'll just do, zoom in on the top. Let's see what we can see what we can see. Now I know like I'm not tune into any uh, music or something because I know there's something about YouTube and music where I don't know they come to your house and remove your spleen or something if you play some kind of music or you, you can never broadcast on YouTube again so I'll try to avoid music so if you see me just stop briefly at music that's why This, let's see what band this is. Okay. This would be band A, which is your regular AM broadcast band. That's probably all that noise. I'm sure it's something either in the house or nearby. Because it was a lot of traffic. But with that antenna, that that's all that I'm using is that antenna back there. And I don't live too close to the city and I'm actually down in a valley so 
That antenna works very well. Here's music, so we'll go right past that. Of course, on AM, I don't think you get a lot of music these days. So there's A, let's see, B will be this band here. I haven't put the stickers on yet. I actually did get new stickers for it. Uh, and just always some, seems to come, something seems to come up. So let me see what I can. It seems there's a lot of uh, religious type stations down here. Let me see. And the, these down here seems to come together a little bit better later at night. So let me just... Don't mind me if, if I light up. That's me moving the antenna. If I light up, it means that uh, I grabbed the wrong thing. can hear it very faint. That's the Canadian uh, atomic clock. There it is there. Let's see if you can hear the So that, yeah, that's the that's the Canadian atomic clock. Uh, we'll see how well the, the ones in the U.S. come in. Like I said, this time of day... This kind of time of day, th this band down here is kind of hit or miss. So let's see. That was, that should be C. That'll be the band up here. Hello. Mm. He has young beans of way below and not even, it's not even to be compared. I'm not sure what that is. Hang on, I'm going to make sure that I have C. Yeah. Let's see. So 7 megahertz, 8, we'll shoot up to around 10 and see if we can pick up the atomic clock here. I'm not sure what that is. Sounds, has a Latin sound to it. Let me try here. I think the atomic clock should be right around here somewhere. If we're going to hear it on it now, but then I can shoot up to 15 because it's 10 and 15. And so we'll go. So anyhow, that's uh, that's it, and uh, like I said, I think it works very well with just that antenna. Let me see. I was going to try and maybe if I move it a little bit, I can pick up the atomic clock better and see if I get electrocuted here reaching down. Uh, but it is amazing how things worked back in the day. You know, I could see somebody sitting back in their easy chair. Yeah. 
try back down closer to 10. Of course it sounds quieter down on this end. Well, Yeah, I don't know where the signals are coming from right now, this time of night, or afternoon. But the, uh, the atomic clock's definitely not one of them. Not, at least not at 10 and 15. I don't know if we'd be able to get anything down on 5 or up at 20. Actually, this doesn't go to 20, so no, we definitely wouldn't be able to. So, okay. Enough said, I just wanted to show you how that little antenna works pretty well, and uh, I have hooked this up to an outside antenna, and actually it works very well too, and uh, that's, it for, that's it for the RCA. I was going to show you too, the, uh, I have the Holocrafters, the, the videos that I, I showed, just pictures of when I was putting them together, I figured I'd show you them running. Okay, so I'll show you the, uh, this is the CB radio Golden Eagle Mark III. You know, I always wanted one. Uh, and when I was a little kid and these were out, I could never afford one. And the CB craze kind of came and went and I forgot about it. And actually I got this one on eBay for a really good price and it didn't work. Uh, and it was in so, it, the shape, uh, it was in such great shape that uh, I couldn't believe I couldn't pass it up, and I didn't expect it to be in as good a shape as it was. That was me plugging the radio in, so if you saw the top of my head. Uh, so uh, I, I really didn't do any touch-up work to it or anything. I just electron electronically got it working and uh, basically wiped it down. The only thing it has is it has couple little nicks here, maybe somebody with a ring when they were adjusting one of the knobs or something repeatedly hit it, but that's it. Uh, so we'll get them both warmed up. Obviously they're both tube sets, so you'll see what you'll see how that works. And then if you look up here, what I do is you see all the wires. I have uh, radios in the cabinet here, and then like these radios, and I run the wiring up to that for the antennas and everything, and that way if I want to switch around the antennas, I don't have to reach behind, I can do them all up here like in a bulkhead. And then if I bring, say, another radio in, like you know, a scanner or something, I want to hook it to one of my antennas, I can do that right here without having to reach behind radios and disconnect stuff. I just thought it would make it easier to have a bulkhead kind of thing there. so. Uh, all right, so real quick, I'll just go through the uh, the eagle because there's not a lot, not a lot to that, and I don't even think it's a good skip time for AM. Yeah, I'm hearing nothing. the famous uh, Golden Eagle squeal and I'm sure if you want to mess around with the, the values of the uh, capacitance in there you can make it much longer if you like. Uh, I generally when I when I do use the radio I forget to wait till it's done squealing so I like it nice and short like that. <clears throat> yeah there's not I don't hear anything on there. Um, this isn't the these are upper and lower sidebands and I guess this must be the newer version of the Mark III because it has, instead of having CB and I think they had like Crystal 1 and Crystal 2 or something, this one has CB, HF and Crystal. And all the HF is I believe is the, some of the, the, the upper 40 
that came out came out later because this is a 23 channel and uh you know the newer cbs have their 40 channel the one at the 27 megahertz radios so enough on that one i'll turn that down a little bit and we'll look down at the uh the holocrafters which i'm sure you've seen that in quite a few videos of mine it's another one of these radios that i i got and put a lot of time into it and not that much money. I mean it needed, ended up needing a transformer for the uh, audio and I did all the, redid all the caps. So turn this up. Usually I'm up here in, in four on four band which covers 28 because when I do uh, sometimes we have a web up here on, on 10 meters and I was just tuning around so I leave it there so let me turn it down so I don't blast myself. This is actually right now, it's going to a gap antenna, which is for the, uh, the ham radios. So we'll just see what, if we can tune into anything here. In fact, with the outside antenna, I'll look for the, uh, the time signals. So let's see, the first one we're gonna probably find at that would be on band two, which we're on. And I'll go. You can hear it. That's the Canadian one. And just to give you an idea, it doesn't sound that much louder with an external antenna than with the uh, the antenna that we were using inside that other radio, but that's on this band. So we'll see what we can find as far as the uh, 10 and 15 megahertz go. So let me, let me just... See, now the one thing about this is It tunes in AM and CW, but not sideband. So you're, when you're in the ham bands, you really gotta finesse it to, to understand that. This is missing the knob right here for pitch control, and for some reason, it seems a lot of them are, but this is actually not just like a variable resistor. This is actually an inductor. So you, you take the knob off to set it, and then you put the knob back on. And it's got a little stop here, and I think over the years, people must maybe manhandle them a little bit and that's why I see so many of them without that on it. Another thing about the way you tune this is you get it to the band you want. We'll, we'll, let me find and see if I can get something we can listen to. And then this knob actually is like a fine tuning for the band. So what you can do is you can park it where you want it and then tune back on and it makes it easier to, uh, to tune in stations. So let me see, we're gonna try, uh, what I say, the 10, that would be on band three. And like I said, see how that, it's kind of like a fine tune. Now the antenna definitely sounds like it helped on that because I can remember the music on the other one right around 10 was definitely not that strong. But if the uh, if the signal's just not propagating in this area, there's really no what you can do. So that's 10. We'll be try. Again, it seems like a lot of religious music, I mean religious stations up here. 10, let's go to 15. I don't know if we're going to hear 15. This radio is weird on the ends of the band like that. 